Hi, this is Mithul Suthar and in this video I want to talk about controlling multiple servos using Raspberry Pi 2, PCA9685, Windows IoT and C Sharp. Servo motors are widely popular in industrial and robotics applications. They are usually controlled with pulse width modulated signal. That means servo motors can turn from 0 degree to 180 degrees based upon the width of the pulse. In this example, if you provide a 0.5 millisecond pulse, the servo will turn at 0 degrees. And if you provide a 1.5 millisecond pulse, then the servo will turn at 90 degrees. In this experiment, we are going to use PCA9685 board. PCA9685 is a 16 channel, 12 bit PWM, I square C bus LED controller. 16 channel means you can control 16 servo motors using this board and it can communicate over I square C protocol with the Raspberry Pi 2. Even though it says LED controller, you can perfectly control servo motors with it. The input and output pins of the, this board are 5 volt tolerant. There are several advantages of using this board while controlling your servo motors or LED. Since you, it communicates using I2C protocol, you can connect up to 62 PCA9685 boards and control up to 992 servos you can control. It frees up your GPIO pins of your Raspberry Pi 2. That means you can connect other sensors and devices with your Raspberry Pi 2. And you have direct connectors for servo uh, motors and you don't have to hunt for pins. You have external power supply pins and the board is highly accurate. Let's talk about some mathematics involved in calculating the perfect amount of steps required to turn a motor at a particular angle. PCA9685 requires a PWM frequency. Now analog servos operate from 30 Hz to 60 Hz. Let's take 60 Hz in our example. If f is equal to 60, now my question to you is what will is the period t in seconds it is quite simple if t is equal to 1 upon over f then t is 17 milliseconds let's talk about the 12 bit resolution of the controller what does 12 bit resolution mean each period t of our frequency can be equally divided into 2 raised to 12 steps that means that 17 milliseconds we calculated above can be equally divided into 4096 steps. Another question, if 17 milliseconds is divided into 4096 steps, then how many steps in 0.5 milliseconds, which is 120 steps. From our earlier diagram, 0 degree corresponds to 0.5 millisecond pulse. In other words, for 0 degree, in order to provide 0.5 millisecond pulse, we have to provide an on pulse for 120 steps and off pulse for the remaining pulses, for the remaining steps. In this diagram, you can see, so for x amount of steps, you have to provide an on pulse and for the remaining amount of steps, you have to provide an off pulse. Based upon our earlier calculation, we can similarly find the number of steps required for 0, 60, 90, up to 180 degrees as shown in this table. Let's find out the steps there are from 120 to 602 steps. How? What is the difference between 602 and 120? It is very simple, 482 steps, which means there are 482 steps going from 0 to 180 degrees. So next question is if there are 482 steps from 0 to 180, find the number of steps for angle theta. That means for any given angle, we want to find out the steps required. And that is, first we need to find out the steps per angle. And that gives us the equation 120 plus 2.7 into theta gives us the number of steps or 120 plus 602 minus 120 over 180 into theta. If we summarize 0 degree, if you put, if you substitute 0 
in our theta we get 120 steps and if we substitute 30 we get 201 steps and if we again summarize then for 0 degree for 120 steps we will provide a 5 volt pulse and for the remaining pulses we will provide a 0 volt pulse similarly for 30 degree we will provide 201 steps 5 volt pulse the remaining 0 volt pulses for these many steps. Before we go into the demo, this is my environment. I am using you know, all the different components used in this demo are listed here. You can refer this slide uh, at any time. This is the block diagram for our experiment. I have uh, my host PC communicates with a Raspberry Pi 2 over Ethernet. Raspberry Pi 2 communicates with PCA9685 via I2C protocol. Raspberry Pi 2 and PCA9685 have their individual power supply. I am showing just two servos connected with PCA9685 here. Next we'll look at the pin diagram. This pin diagram is done by Adafruit and I'm just using their diagram. It is very difficult to read. Uh, in this diagram but in this slide we can slightly understand a little bit better so pin 1 of raspberry pi 2 is connected with the vcc of pca pin 3 which is the serial data line is connected with the serial data line of pca 9685 and pin 5 the clock pin is connected with the clock pin of pca 9685 and the ground is pin 6 both of them are connected with the external power supply. Now we will download the code required to run this demo. Click on the link to navigate to GitHub and download the code for this demo. I have opened the code in Visual Studio Community Edition and the version of Visual Studio I am running is 15.5.1. The All the classes all the logic required to communicate with Raspberry Pi 2 over I2C protocol is in this I2C base class. This is class is borrowed from the Adafruit class library project from GitHub. And all the logic for encapsulating the PCA9685 board is encapsulated in this class. For some reason, their code directly was not working in my experiment and I had to copy it and modify a little bit so it works. Let's talk about the main UI of this application. Since it, uh, to make it easier to understand and debug, I have divided the UI into three main steps. The first is this button which will initialize the board. Then you have to set a frequency for your PCA9685 board. So I have by default set it to 60 Hertz. Just click set PWM frequency and it will set the frequency. Then based upon the number of servos you have connected, I am just showing four servos. And in reality, I am just connecting two servos. So you can provide 60 degree here or like any angle here ranging from 0 to 180 degree and click on this button and the corresponding servo will turn at that angle. Let's go to the code behind page. In the main page method, we are creating a new instance of the PCA9685. It has a method to initialize the device and then it has a method to initialize the PWM frequency. And then for any given pin out of those 16 pins, for any pin, we can tell it how many steps it has to remain on. And by default, it will figure out how many steps it has to remain off. So from this equation, we can calculate, for example, for a zero degree angle, we have 120 steps. So for 120 steps, it will remain on and for the rest of the steps, 
the pin 0 will remain off and this functionality is encapsulated into a private method called turn servo pin and all those individual buttons for each servo they just call this method and we are passing in 0 for 0 pin 1 for the first pin 2 for the second pin third for the fourth pin and so on before running the application i want to show you my settings for the project let's go to the properties of this project if we go to the application tab make sure the version numbers are the latest in the build the my platform target is arm make sure your platform is arm and in the debug section again make sure your platform is arm my target device is a remote machine remote machine ip address i am directly specifying it and the port number authentication mode is none and that's all there is in my settings now in order to run this project just click the run button here and the code will be deployed to raspberry pi and it will start executing now for some reason i cannot debug this application i can just run the application directly on the device provide some input through a separate keyboard I have connected to Raspberry Pi and a separate monitor. So for the next section of the demo, I am going to uh, switch over to another video device. For this part of the demo, you need to log into the device portal using the IoT dashboard. I am logged into the Raspberry Pi device and you need to go into the debug tab, go to debug settings and in this area, where it says start visual studio remote debugger you need to start it now the device is running and as you can see we are using this port in our debug settings inside visual studio for our project now we will run our application on our raspberry pi 2 After deploying the application, Visual Studio throws this error and I am unable to find out the solution for this error. I just click OK and switch over to another monitor to run our application. In this part, I will show you my current setup of controlling servos. This is our first power supply. Uh, this powers the Raspberry Pi 2. Raspberry Pi 2 is directly connected with the Ethernet. It is connected to the second monitor via HDMI cable Raspberry Pi 2 all the input to our application is controlled by our this keyboard my PC is connected uh, with this keyboard Raspberry Pi 2 and PC9685 are connected with uh, through this breadboard this is our servo 0 this is our servo 1 and this is our power supply 2 you can see it is set to 5.2 volts right now and this is our application and this is our device portal as shown in our host PC. Now as I have explained the application very, is very easy to run. First we will just click on the initialize PCA9685 button. This prints out initializing PCA9685. Now we will set the PWM frequency for the board which is 60 Hz. Now we will enter a desired angle for our servo 0 and servo 1. So right now I have already set the servos to 0 angle. As you can see here they are at 0 degrees. I can add let's say 20 degrees and let's say add uh, like um, 60 degrees for servo 1. So servo 0 20 degrees and servo 0 at 60 degrees again servo 0 at 90 degrees servo 1 at 90 degrees servo 0 at 180 degrees Servo 1 at 180 degrees 
आंसर वो जीरो एट जीरो डिग्री सर वो वन एट जीरो डिग्री In this section, we are going to change our calculation so that our servo doesn't overturn or it doesn't go beyond zero. So, as you have noticed, all of our calculations or our equation depends on two values. That is, one is lower bound, that is 120, and another is upper bound, which is 602. Now, I have found these to be acceptable values, so they go from zero to 180 degrees. That is, 125 is my lower bound, and 503 is my upper bound. And if I plug this value into my new equation, we get the following: 125 plus 503 minus 125 over 180 multiplied by our theta angle, and that will give our steps. Let's see how our uh, code behaves. So after changing our calculations, let's try to. Make them toggle from zero to one eighty degrees. First, we will do for our servo zero. That's one eighty, and that's zero. And this is servo one. That's one eighty, and that's zero. So that's all there is to tuning your servos. For each servo, you have to make sure that your upper bound and lower bound you adjust those two values, and your servo will turn at an angle that you wish. So we can turn uh, our servo one. At 90 degrees, that's 90. Servo zero at 90. Now you may see that it is not exactly 90, and it also depends upon the groove your servo horn is mounted on. Uh, you may not be able to mount at the perfect 90 degree angle for your individual servos, and those upper bound and lower bound you might have to uh, manipulate for each servos. So this tuning is not guaranteed to work for all servos. You have to Make sure you account for this in your code and in your all of your calculations. So this is the final slide, and I have posted links for you to refer. First link is the entire blog post that I have written on my blog about this experiment. All the PowerPoint slides can be obtained at this link, and other uh, links can be accessed here. So thank you for watching, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mithul Sothar, and you can subscribe my channel. Thank you.